Hello, and welcome back to another edition of That Geek Guy. In our pilot episode, I showed you several different Commodore hacks that can be done, such as Jiffy DOS and the Servant. Then in part two, I revealed what I called the ultimate Commodore hack. In that episode, I revealed a Commodore 128 that I had converted into a working PC. Many people have asked me since that video if I could reveal what's actually inside. So in this episode, I'm going to do just that. But before I do, I want you to pause this video and take a moment to subscribe. That way you won't miss out on any great episodes of That Geek Guy. And now for the reveal. Okay, so with the screws removed, we'll go ahead and pull the case here and see what's inside. All right, here you go. So, for starters, uh, I've got a little miniature uh, power supply inside of here. Um, underneath that, I have a Western Digital 500 gig hard drive. I have a Coolmaster cooling fan here. It's been about four years since I built this and I don't remember it running as warm as it's been running and I think what I've done is since I opened this up last, double check on it, I put the fan in the opposite direction than I had it before. So I'm going to be reversing this fan here and, and having it do that way, having it blow outward. But the rest of the reveal, what we have inside of here is we have an Asus E35M1-I Deluxe Motherboard. Um, as you can see, it's a fanless CPU. And that's why I had the concerns about how I was going to run the, the cooling fan. In fact, now I definitely remember uh, we have this hologram sticker on here, which was the pretty shiny thing that you could see through the vent holes. And I believe that's going to be our solution. Now, there is a lot of dust on this fan and on the CPU. So I'm going to be uh, blowing it out and then putting it all back together and we'll have it finished. Uh, but to wrap up the, uh, the reveal here, uh, this is a, a 1.6 uh, gigahertz processor. It's an AMD. We have two 2 gigabyte SD RAMs. I believe these are uh, DDR2, if I'm not mistaken. We have our SATA connections here, which is 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 more modern. I showed you before. We've got the USB 3s. Uh, we've got the Bluetooth enable on here, and a lot of functionality. Um, when I built this, it was state of the art. Everything was high speed. Uh, I think I'm finding out now the one drawback here is we now have 802.11 um, AC and in this one it's only N so it's a little slower than I remember. I think the only last thing to show here is we've got an, AP, or an APG video card connector which you can't use on this particular setup here and uh, again I'll put all the specs inside the uh, inside the comments below. At this point you may be wondering if the guts are inside of the floppy drive, then how do I get the keyboard to interact with the computer? Therein lies the secret of this mod. Let's check it out. Inside the shell, I've installed a Kira interface made by Johann Schofield. The board fits in the case of most Commodore 8-bit computers, such as the Commodore 64, VIC-20, and Plus 4, and turns the computer into a USB keyboard. Well, that about wraps it up for this episode of The Geek Guy. Thanks for tuning in. If you haven't done so already, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on other great episodes like this one, or this one, or this one. Come back soon. Don't forget to click here to subscribe.